All right, Dan. Your ratings are dropping. Let's try a new look. All right. Good evening. I'm Dan Rather. 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 This is not working. There's only one person who can help me. Who's that? Fred, the bartender at DC Follies. Tonight, nearly live from Washington, D.C., Sid and Marty Croft present D.C. Follies. Starring Fred Willard, owner of the hottest club in Washington, D.C. And very special guest star, Robin Leach. And the magic of the Croft Puppets. Oh, hi. Welcome back. Nice to see you again. I'm Fred. This is my place, D.C. Follies. Right down the street from the White House. It's the kind of place that almost anyone can drop by at almost any given time. Hiya, Fred. Well, hello, Mr. Gorbachev. Gorby to you, my friend. <laughs> so good to see you. I haven't seen you since I tended bar at that last summit in uh, Iceland. Uh, you still have the tie I sent you? Are you kidding? It's my favorite, red burlap. I only wear it on special occasions. Ah, uh -huh, good, good. Look, you must be tired. Would you like to go in the back and freshen up? Yes, I want to use some of your famous American hawk soap. I have heard so much about it. One quarter cleansing cream, you know. That's Dove Soap, sir. Don't be a rascal. Stick around. He's not the only one. Yeah. Hey, hey. Hiya, big guy. Hi, Mr. Madden. I want to ask you something. Hey, guy. You shouldn't be wearing that Pope mask. Oh. That's sacrilegious. No, no, Mr. Give Madden. me that thing. Coach. That's the funniest looking thing I Coach, ever saw. Coach, no. Coach. Take that. Give me that thing. Oh, That's the funniest looking thing I No, I'm trying to be incognito. Oh, oh, no. Sorry for the personal foul there, Your Holiness. You ought to forgiven. Uh, can I buy you a drink? Maybe, how about a little holy water? Okay, this is an easy one. Richard? Yeah. Who was President Nixon's second vice president? Okay, second. Oh, Let me that see that one. Oh, 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 oh. oh no, 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 no. Jerry, will you cut uh, that out? You're breaking my train of thought. President Nixon, there's a policeman out front says you have to move your bookmobile. Oh, don't worry about it, Freddy. I never pay tickets. <laughs> bookmobile? Sure, you know, because of that uh, little unpleasantness when I left office, uh, no one wanted to accept my library. You mean your presidential library is a bookmobile? <laughs> gentlemen, gentlemen, hey, please. I'm I think it's there, terrific. Please. A presidential <laughs> library that goes out to the people. That's right. Oh, well, then act like trickies. You got to keep moving. Oh. <laughs> exactly, buddy. You see, Pat and I are very concerned about the people. When someone comes in to read my papers for only a slight extra charge, we take their blood pressure and give them a chest x ray. Well, I think that's terrific, sir. Oh, yeah. And listen, if you fellas are hungry, why don't you step out to the bookmobile? Today, Pat's featuring a chef salad. Oh. And if you need cash, we have an automatic teller machine, and we can even take your passport picture. <laughs> Telegram so for you, Mr. Nixon. Boom! It's oh. from the Washington, D.C. Public Library. Read it to me, Fred. I knew this would happen. Oh. They want to make my library part of their permanent collection. Mm, right. I don't think so, sir. What? It has come to our attention that over 75% of the books in your bookmobile were taken out of the public library and never returned. <laughs> <laughs> we demand that you return the books at once, along with late fees totaling $51,872.15. Oh, Are you all right, sir? Well, there, there was, must be some mistake. Oh, yeah, I'm, sure. I'm, I'm, I'm sure I returned all of those books. Right. I, Maybe you forgot just a few, sir. Well, uh, there's always a possibility, this but, can uh, happen but I assure you that there was never any intent on my part of stealing government Max, property. Uh, may, may, maybe Max. Pat was the one that got into it. Well, well you, when you get home, you'll straighten the whole thing up. my computer. Oh. And this telex is I for you. It's to tell me this library nonsense is a, is a computer error. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, it's from the White House Historical Society. Huh? Some problem with your presidential art collection. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe he should go out to his bookmobile for a chest x-ray. <laughs> uh, hello there.
there, Mr. President. Hello. Miss, Mr. Gorbachev, Mr. Gorbachev. Glass nast what your country can do for you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go, sirs. I picked out a nice quiet table for the two of you. Oh, thank you, Fred. Spasiba, Fred. Yeah, that's very nice of you. Well, Mr. Gorbachev, which seat would you like? Hmm? Yet, yet, President Reagan, you should choose. Mr. Gorbachev, I insist that you have the choice of seats. Well, very well. I'll take this one. Oh. Oh. Three chairs and you choose that one, huh? Well, then, I'll take it. Oh, I see your scheme. You tricked me into letting you have that chair. The very move Roosevelt pulled on Stalin at Yalta. No, I see your plan. Choosing this chair is the beginning of a Soviet takeover of our hemisphere. That does it. Gentlemen. Get it, huh? Gentlemen, well, gentlemen, you... this won't lead you anywhere. Fred, this man is impossible. I'm impossible. <laughs> Look, I'll tell you what. Why don't I hum? Then you start walking. When I stop humming, each of you grabs the nearest chair. Oh, now that makes sense. Of course it makes sense. It's just another example of good old American know-how. Let's call it good old international know-how. Are you ready, gentlemen? Right. Yes. Here we go. Okay. I don't know this. Here it is. I got it. It's mine. No, no, no. Wait, no, no, no. And put the drinks on my tab, Fred. Well, why, why should they go on your tab? I can put them on my tab if I want to. It's a free country. Yes, but it's my free country. Oh. Gentlemen, let them stay on my tab, all right? What, That's what very country nice. is he from? I don't know. Let's see, check your citizenship papers. Hello, Fred. Di, what are you... Uh, where's Prince Charles? Um, back in England. He's really not disposed to meeting my ex-boyfriend. <sighs> well, now, Di, that was a long time uh, how ago. How about an heir? No, no, you know how you get when you have too many pints. Besides, you never pay your tab. Well, I am the princess, you know, and I don't carry currency. Royalty. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. And a good evening to you, too, sir. Everything yeah. okay? Well, the truth is, Fred, I need some advice. The evening news has dropped to second place for the first time in history. Third place, Dan. It dropped to third place behind Jennings. It's <laughs> only temporary, Oprah. Uh, definitely. And I'm sure the rumors about you being replaced are just rumors. Replaced? Yeah. I saw Diane Sawyer walking through the hall saying, good evening. Good evening. Nonsense. If I thought for even a moment they were considering replacing me, I'd be at the studio and not here. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Where's my hat? Where's my coat? Fred, get me my bill. Quickly. Uh, where's those bunny ears? Jimmy, you never got caught with another woman. You never stole other people's speeches. You never cheated on Rosalind. You never cheated in college. And you have the gall to call yourself a Democrat. <laughs> Two, Fred, double, no, triple martini. Yes. What's wrong, Mrs. P.M.? What's wrong? What's wrong? There's a meeting of the superpowers and I'm not invited. And they're right. England is nothing anymore. We used to be so great. Well, no use crying over spilled milk, love. What do you say you and I go dancing and forget the whole thing? <laughs> Look, it is Secretary General Mikhail Gorbachev, one of the most powerful men in the world today, and one Communist Party animal. Please, no interviews. But, Gorby, baby, we'll whisk you to Puerto Vallarta, the French Riviera of the Cancun Peninsula. <laughs> Ah, uh, sorry to see you're having so much trouble getting people to appear on your show, Mr. Leach. Well, thank you, Fred. You know, that's very kind. Mm. You know, you have taste. Oh. You have style. <laughs> you have personal dignity. Thanks. I want you as a guest for my show, Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. Who, me? Well, wait a minute. I'm not rich. I'm certainly not famous. But oh, it no. doesn't matter. You know, I could make a junkyard hobo sound like the Sultan of Brunei. Oh, I'm not so sure about that, Mr. Leach. Well, <laughs> you just watch. This is Fred, owner of one of the most lavishly appointed bars in the world today. DC Follies. Here at DC Follies, every chair is made from real wood, cut by hand in the lush, verdant forest of Washington State. Washington State, 
the French Riviera of the Pacific Northwest. The entire bar is illuminated by unique electrical devices invented by Thomas Edison, the wizard of Menlo Park himself. And Fred is wearing a shirt made of Oxford cloth, named for one of the most prestigious and respected universities in the world today. He carries this handcrafted wallet, made from an actual cow hide, from an actual cow, just like the one created in the book of Genesis. How much is he worth, you ask? Who knows for sure? But here is a single dollar bill, one of millions and millions printed every day at the United States Mint in the nation's capital, Washington, D.C., the French Riviera of the Potomac. That was just terrific. Yes, you know, I never realized how much I loved average people. Oh. Fred, I'm going to make you a three-part interview. Wow! Um, you know what else I have? Um, Robin, um, I, I do have time to do your show after all. Uh, Fred, nice uh, talking to you. Uh, goodbye. Princess Di, the fashion leader. The one and only. The most beautiful <laughs> Madden, you hunk of loose flesh, you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, Mrs. Lady. <laughs> oh, hello, friend. Hello, Mrs. Reagan. How can I help you? Well, I just came in to see if uh, Ron and Mr. Gorbachev were getting into trouble. Oh, I'm sure they're doing fine. They are the leaders of the two superpowers, well, the yeah. two most responsible men in the whole world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My country can do anything better than yours, can I? <laughs> My country can do anything better than yours. No, it can't. Yes, it can. No, it can. Yes, it can. Yes, it can. Yes, it can. Uh, we have bigger farms. Uh, we have bigger arms. My country is less poor. Uh, you started every war. We have pay TV and cable. Uh, we have caviar and sable. We want lasting peace that's global. You damn near killed us with Chernobyl. Uh, I have a great disarmament plan. You invaded Afghanistan. Mm, uh, you're just a stupid actor. Your wife looks like a tractor. Oh, Gentlemen, yeah. Gentlemen, please, please. This is not going to get you anywhere. Uh, I'll see. I can't believe I gave up a scab football game to argue with this guy. Uh, scab football? Yeah. Did you say scab football? Yes, I, I did. love scab football. You do? Yes. Well, remember that spy satellite we launched in June? Oh, yes, I sure I do. I use it to get Redskin game. Get out of here. Really? You're kidding me. Yeah. I never dreamed you liked sports. Sure. Boom! <laughs> Got her off guard! Got her off guard! New Jersey is in panic. Martians have been sighted all over the state. Hey, Fred, is it just me or did this place used to be a bar? Sorry, Jack, I'm listening to a rebroadcast of Orson Welles' War of the Worlds. I never get tired of this. All right, I'll make this as easy for you as I can. I want a bourbon, neat, and a little see-through thing called a shot glass. You know what I mean? Ah, oh, coming up, Jack. You know, this show is so realistic. When it was originally broadcast, people thought it was real that Martians were actually landing. That's real fascinating. But in this day and age, it's kind of hard to believe that anyone could be fooled by a radio play. Am I right? Absolutely. Please report your units immediately. This is horrible. People are fleeing for their lives. More and more Martian spaceships are landing. I don't know how long America can hold out against this invasion from Mars. Oh, my gosh. Martians landing. We're being attacked. The green things with spots. What am I going to do? Whoa, Bonzo. Where, where are you when I need you, Bonzo? Whoa. I have, I have to calm down. I am the commander-in-chief. Now, what should I do first? I know. I better consult with Mr. Gorbachev. He'll know. Yeah, that's it. Psst. Psst. Uh, no, no. No, no. You. you. No, no. No. No, 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 Gorbachev. Oh, the ballet dancer. Maybe he's going to defect. I know there's a story in this. What could he want? What? Mr. What? Gorbachev. Yes. Listen, the Martians are attacking. What? Martians? The latest report has the Martians heading for the Holland Tunnel. 
Oh, my godlessness. I told you. I told you. Uh, See? I, 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 well, I better call Moscow. Yes. I'll use the bar for. Yes, go. go. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. We coordinate our forces. Now, I need someone who I can trust, someone who follows orders, someone who can anticipate my needs. You rang, sir? Ali. Ali North. What a sight for sore wrinkles. What are you doing here? I just came in here to shred the Constitution. Not now. Tell me, do we have a contingency plan? Should we be invaded by Mars? Yes, of course, sir. We have one for every planet, two for Jupiter. Will, the Martians are invading. Implement the contingency plan. Yes, sir. Let's see. Should I tell Congress now? Should I wait till we have a beachhead on the moon? Ah, hello, sir. Listening to War of the Worlds, eh? I just love Orson Welles. Orson Welles? War of the Worlds? Yeah, isn't it great? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, uh, very realistic. It uh, uh, still holds up, doesn't it? Uh, Mr. President. Mr. President. Uh, what is it, Poindexter? Well, Ollie North was arrested at NASA, sir. He was babbling something about loading space shuttles with nuclear weapons, a Martian invasion or something. He was arrested? Uh, you know, Fred, uh, people have to stop initiating actions without consulting me. Uh, I mean, uh, an attack on a neighboring planet is, is a serious matter. You know, maybe Ollie was listening to War of the Worlds and actually thought it was real. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I think that's it. Whew. Well, it's over and done with now. Oh, my gosh. Mr. Gorbachev. Uh, Mr. Mr. Gorbachev. <laughs> Mr. Gorbachev. I got the has been superpower blues. Ooh. Uh, hi there, Margaret. Hi, Ron. You know, Maggie, you're wrong. England is not a second-rate power. No, oh, we both know that it is, Ron. There's no use lying about it. Uh, no fooling you, huh, Maggie? No. <laughs> We've been through too much together. The Persian Gulf, the Falklands. McEnroe at Wimbledon. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we barely survived that war. <laughs> oh. uh. What is it, Ron? I was thinking... You know, I'm the president of the strongest country in the world. Second strongest. Oh, shut up. <laughs> and soon I'll be out of office and just another out-of-work B actor. Yes. Probably waiting on tables. You know, Maggie, yes. people like countries come and go. Mm. Sometimes powerful, sometimes not. Oh, it's true. Mm. But sometimes it makes you feel helpless. What can one do? Well... I guess the best thing for old-timers like us to do is just go with the flow. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh my. Yes. Oh, uh, go ahead, another concession. You're quite a little dancer, sir. Well, I was always light on my feet, Freddie. Yes, I know. I've seen your press conferences. You sure can tap dance. <laughs> That's a good one, Fred. But, you know, I could cut a mean rug when I was younger. Yeah. I remember when I was a teenager, you know, the, the country was in a good mood. Mm -hmm. George Washington had just crossed the Delaware. Oh, come on, sir. <laughs> well, maybe not that long no, ago. No. Say, Fred, could you flip on the news? I want to see how I'm doing with oh, the country. Sure. All right. And now a special bulletin. Martians have invaded the Earth. They're landing everywhere. Run for your lives, you fools. You're next. They're coming for you. Green little beings with yucky yellow eyes. Hide your sisters. Hey, leave me alone, you fools. What? Oh, hey, hey, what are you doing? Well, at least let me sign off. Good, 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 good evening. You know, Fred, speaking of aliens, I've come up with an idea to solve the problem of immigration once and for all. Really? Yes. You know, I think that we should build along the U.S. border a 2,000-mile-long mirror. A mirror? Yes. See, then all that, say, uh, 200 illegal aliens will see as they try to run into America 
It'll be 200 illegal aliens trying to run, run right out, out again. Yes, yes. What do you yeah. think of that? It huh? makes good sense. I thought it yes. was first it was going to be silly. Yes. It's good business. It's good business, yes. And that's what makes this country strong. That's exactly. You may be right. And, you know, that's why I'm here. To make the country strong? Well, yes. I believe that, you know, the economy... Before I got in there, Jimmy Carter had the inflation rate up to about a 5% level. And in order to get that rate lower, what you have to do is get the inflation rate that the banks have um, when they... When they have the rate of inflation, they have the Federal Reserve Board oh, put the, the all that um, extra, they, they pump up the money supply. You've been reading the paper again, haven't you? How did you? I think if the country can survive under your administration, it shows we're pretty strong in that. I mean that only in the best way. All right, Dan, your ratings are dropping. Let's try a new look. All right. Good evening. I'm Dan Rather. 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 This is not working. There's only one person who can help me. Who's that? Fred, the bartender at DC Follies. Tonight, nearly live from Washington, DC, Sid and Marty Croft present DC Follies. Starring Fred Willard, owner of the hottest club in Washington, DC. And very special guest star, Robin Leach. And the magic of the Croft Puppets. Oh, hi. Welcome back. Nice to see you again. I'm Fred. This is my place, DC Follies. Right down the street from the White House. It's the kind of place that almost anyone can drop by at almost any given time. Hiya, Fred. Well, hello, Mr. Gorbachev. Gorby to you, my friend. <laughs> so good to see you. I haven't seen you since I tended bar at that last summit in uh, Iceland. Uh, you still have the tie I sent you? Are you kidding? It's my favorite, red burlap. I only wear it on special occasions. Ah, uh -huh, good, good. Look, you must be tired. Would you like to go in the back and freshen up? Yes, I want to use some of your famous American hawk soap. I have heard so much about it. One quarter cleansing cream, you know. That's Dove Soap, sir. Don't be a rascal. Stick around. He's not the only one. Yeah. Hey, hey. Hiya, big guy. Hi, Mr. Madden. I want to ask you something. Hey, guy. You shouldn't be 